Hello everyone, I'm Chad. And I'm Ben. All right, we'd like to help you uh, answer some questions and we'd like to talk today about what helps players play better golf. Is it the skill or is it the swing? So there's a lot of talk in the golf instruction world about creating a certain type of swing or making it look a certain type of way. Uh, so we'd like to share some ideas with you that may give you some different insight into what it takes for you to play better golf. What are your thoughts, man? <laughs> so check this guy out. So what if we had told you that this gentleman can break 80 for 18 holes? Would you copy that swing? Chances are probably not. So one of the things that we're going to uncover today is we're going to talk a lot about how we like to develop skills rather than talk about technique. We believe it's not fair for us to compare you to tour players or uh, LPGA tour players, Symmetra tour players, Corn Ferry players. So what we're going to talk about today is how to develop skills rather than swings and we're basically going to uncover some myths that are out there in the golf instruction world. Very good. So golf is a game of skills. That's the number one truth that we need you to understand. It's not about the swing and making a perfect swing, it's about gathering the skills. And golf is played by you, the player. So it's very, very important that you, the player, develop the skills that'll serve you, your body type, your preferences, your lifestyle, your schedule, all the things that go into the recipe. So having said that, as we walk through this, we just wanna keep in mind, golf's a game of skills, and it's all about you, the person, not just the swing. So if you look at these two gentlemen here, so we have Jim Furyk and Ricky Fowler. So the neat thing about these two gentlemen is they're both making millions of dollars playing the game of golf. But if you take a look at those two golf swings and how much different they look, well, which one is right and which one is wrong? We would say neither. So like I said, both make millions playing golf. If you notice, one has really high arms at the top of the swing, one has really low arms at the top of the swing. So some of the things that you're gonna have to uncover with your own golf game are which works best for you. So we talk a lot about the experimentation phase in our training. So this would be a classic experiment that you could actually run to help yourself at home. Would that be true, Chad? Yeah, you'd be surprised at what you can uncover when you start doing different things. So having said that, a lot of the times uh, our students come to us and they will ask us, well, what's the right way? And the truth is, we've said it before, we've said it a million times again, is we don't know because of examples like this. So millions of dollars in the bank, they can score low all over the world, yet their swings are radically different. So to us, it's more about the player than it is the swing. So having said that, it's fascinating to us that you can have two different totally styles, yet they're both really, really good. Yeah. So a fun experiment for all of you at home is if you're wondering what maybe your arms should be like at the top of the swing, here's a simple experiment you can run. Go ahead and hit a couple shots. You have really high arms at the top of the swing and go really low at the top of the swing and then maybe somewhere in between and just see what happens. So you'd be surprised, a lot of players actually stop getting better because they go into golf with the constraints or the mindset that says there's a certain type of way that it has to be done versus being open to experimentation and find out what way serves you the best. So the question here isn't what's the right way, it's what's the best way for you and that's what we're helping you to try to un uncover. So we talk a lot about mindset before skill set. First mindset is to understand there is no one way, that is for sure, there's no one right way. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different ways. Yeah, many ways to get that ball in the hole. Ooh, here's another good one. How many of you at home have been told you need to shorten your backswing? Don't overswing. <laughs> Can't do that. Yeah. That's not allowed in the game of golf. <laughs> well, what would happen to these two gentlemen? I'm guessing if I told John Daly or Bubba Watson to shorten their backswing, it'd probably ruin their career. Would that be true, Chad? Yeah, we don't know. So at any rate, both of these gentlemen have won two majors, four, four between them. So they've won major championships, losing a swing that, especially in Bubba's case, many would consider unconventional and his feet come off the ground. And, and I remember, you know, when I was in my 20s, I had somebody tell me that you have to keep your feet on the ground. So I tried to do that and it actually hurt me quite a bit. And then furthermore, when I look at Bubba, it's like, wow. It's way different than yeah. what we would think. He's got two green jackets. I know we don't have one. Zero. <laughs> and, he hit, and he's very, very long. So it's that fascinating how long these two gentlemen are. And a lot of people at home are asking us, well, how do I hit it farther? It's like, well, if we go into it again with the constraints and the rules of don't do this, don't do that, got to have a short backswing, look no further than two of the guys who have you know, historically hit it the farthest out there on TV. Oh, yeah. The fascinating thing about guys like John Daly, he can have a long backswing and have a cigarette in his mouth and still play good golf. And show up half drunk sometimes. <laughs> yeah. It's quite fascinating. Yeah. So back to the experimentation phase. Uh, this would be a cool experiment to run. See what happens to the ball if you have a short backswing. See what happens if you have a really long backswing. And then see what happens 
somewhere in between, you'd be surprised that one of those ways or somewhere in between is going to be most helpful for you. Again, back to your body type, your preferences, all the stuff, maybe injury before. Uh, some people will be able to swing farther and some people will not. Either way, it's very, very personal to you and the golf ball as a teacher is going to let you know which way serves you the best. And again, the mindset of there's one way. It's dangerous, no, no. isn't it? It is dangerous. Yeah, we don't want to go down that path. Yeah, totally. Once again, these are two guys that have radically different swings. And the interesting thing is the President's Cup is on TV right now, and these two gentlemen are paired together. Are they really? So, yeah. Today? <laughs> Matt Kuchar and Dustin Johnson are currently playing in the President's Cup together. And you look at how radically different these two swing styles are. So once again, you have one that has really low arms, one that has really high arms. And then the other thing that I'm noticing looking at that image, you have one guy, his wrist looks like this at the top of his swing, and then Matt Kuchar's is relatively, his arms are low and his wrist is flat. So that leads us to another experiment that you can run at home, that being wrist conditions at the top of the swing. Definitely helps control the club face, is that oh, true? Absolutely. Very good. So a lot of the times people come to us like, my swing's too flat. Well, what is maybe, too maybe not? Yeah, well, yeah. What is too flat? Because Kucher seems to make it work for him. And then I've also heard before is you can't play with a shut club face. <laughs> and I see Dustin Johnson's club face pointing right up to the sky. And in golf instruction jargon, that would be a shut club face. So he seems can't to make do it. That. Can't do it, man. So it's uh, fascinating to us how uh, when people go down that pathway of uh, the way the swing needs to be in their mind, it really, really shuts down a whole bunch of possibilities that's going to help you uh, play better. So. It's fascinating to us how different players can do it differently and still make it work. Here's another classic example of, you look at the arms at the top of the swing. So Jack Nicklaus has won more majors than anybody in the history of the game. And guess what? Closely behind him is this guy named Arnold Palmer. So both played in the same era, both some of the best golfers we've ever seen in the history of the game. And once again, you can see how different these two swings look. Yeah, so it's fascinating that these guys were buddies. They played a lot of golf together, but yet they, they did it differently. So uh, one thing Arnold Palmer said that the best lesson he ever got was from his dad. His dad taught him that he had to find a method that would make him, or basically master his method, pardon me. Arnie's dad said, master your method. He said, compared to finding a method that would make him a master. So Arnie got good doing it his way. Jack got great doing it his way. And they do it differently again. When I look at this picture, I've also heard that you can't cross the line at the top. <laughs> Got to keep it on playing. And I'm thinking, Jack, <laughs> the best player in the history of the game, maybe it's Tiger. Crossed yeah, it's cross the line. So it's fascinating to us how all the rules uh, can be quickly dispelled. All the myths can quickly be dispelled if you just start looking around and seeing what players do. I think even Tiger Woods earlier in his career, he was crossed the line as well. And he decided to make that change. Well, the interesting part was even when Tiger was crossed the line, Nobody could touch the guy. He was still amazing. Yeah, So in, in 1997, he, uh, he set the master scoring record. And I remember it was a, it was a little across the line, which... Yeah, can't do that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> can't do that. Yep. So he won by however many, 12 or something. A lot. Yeah, a lot. a lot. So having said that, we're not trying to do it perfect. We're trying to help you learn what works best for you. And that's what our training program is all about. So it's definitely personal. Oh, yes. One of my favorites. You got to keep your head down. You looked up. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, the funny thing about this slide is David Duval uh, at one point was the number one player in the world. So that was when Tiger was on tour as well. So you can imagine how hard it was to take over that world number one position. And he did it without keeping his head down. And then you look at the woman on the right. That's Annika Sorenstam. She is arguably the best female to ever play on the LPGA Tour, and not one time did she keep her head down. She's quite the opposite. Yeah, so I mean, she let look it rotate, at her yeah. eyes at impact. I mean, her eyes are out here at impact. I guarantee you she's never seeing the ball hit the club face. That, what, that is what works best for them. So another experiment you could run at home is you could actually try hitting some balls by letting your head go or not keeping your head down. You may, you may be very surprised what happens to the golf ball. Yeah, so a lot of players at clubs, and especially ladies out there, You've been told to keep your head down a million and one times. This is the most destructive myth, most destructive piece of advice possible. When we look to, at the time players who were playing the best in the world doing it differently, you'd be surprised. So these players have made up their own rules. 
They've been given, the, you know, however they did it, they made up their own rules. Having said that, people who struggle succumb to the rules that aren't true of others. And so yeah. we don't want you at home to fall victim to what everybody else is doing. We want to find out what's true for you, what works for you, and you'd be surprised at how that sets you on a pathway to having great time playing this awesome game. Make your own rules. Pretty much. So, <laughs> so yeah. So my dad taught me, yeah, so he had a famous saying, or it was famous in my mind, is rules are for people who can't make their own. Yeah. So I always thought I knew what he meant by that is you really had to construct your own way because if you didn't, you were going to become a part of somebody else's plan. And what if their plan's no good, you know? So per Mr. Elledge, go make your own rules. Yeah. So that's, <laughs> that's what our app is about. So find out what works for you and let everybody else kind of follow the keep your head down plan because these two did not. Oh, another good one here. You got to keep your left arm straight. I guarantee there's a lot out here that have heard that advice. So look at this guy, Jordan Spieth. He's not too bad either. He's won a couple majors, and he doesn't keep his left arm straight. So what if you didn't keep your left arm straight? So a lot of times what we notice with players when they're trying to keep their left arm straight, they introduce so much tension in their golf swing, and next thing you know, they can't hit the ball. So another cool experiment you could run at home is, what if you just let your arm be soft at the top and you bent it a little bit? And then maybe try to keep it straight. Once again, make your own rules. See what works best for you. I like this one. Uh, <clears throat> again, it creates tons of tension when people are trying to, to restrict things and control yeah. things. And then uh, with our one motion swinging the weight idea uh, that we learned from Michael Hebron, who was the, still the best lesson we ever got, is if you just let the arms fold, it's amazing what smooth swinging <laughs> motion comes out. So the very opposite of what people say you should or shouldn't do uh, is the very thing you probably need to do to create a smooth swinging motion to, so you can get out on the weekend and have a good time. So uh, Jordan Spieth, who a couple of years ago, he ran through the PGA Tour and, and took everybody's money. Uh, both his arms look crooked. <laughs> so not only <laughs> one, but so both true. of them. So on one on one side and, and his right hand or his left arm on the other side. So uh, it's fascinating to us. Our criteria for what's acceptable, if somebody in the world is making a million dollars or more and they're making it work, to us it's fair game. Yeah, you can make it work too. Yeah, so if they can do it, you can do it. So we're trying to shoot, you know, under 90 and enjoy the weekend. They're trying to win majors, so you do not have to be perfect at any of this. You just have to create some space to understand there is not one swing that's right. There's just what works for you, and that is what we are desperately trying to help you figure out. The other interesting thing about the slide chat is if you just look at how his arms are moving through the ball. So some other advice that I always hear is, you got to really roll the wrist over. Well. <laughs> I mean, once again, you look at this, it looks to me he's not rolling his wrists over, but some players do. So once again, there's another cool experiment you can run at home. So try not to let the wrists roll over and let them roll over, maybe somewhere in between those two, and see what happens. Amen. So being open to experimentation and playing around with these ideas is the fastest way to get better, and the ball as a teacher is going to help guide you every step of the way. Ah, here's another fun one. Your backswing's too short. You're not turning enough. You got to get that backswing so it's parallel with the ground. <laughs> yeah. Once again, if you look at these two gentlemen, so John Rahm actually just got the European Tour Player of the Year. He's got a pretty short backswing. And once again, if you look at what his wrist looks like, it's kind of a little bit like Dustin Johnson. So Dustin Johnson has a longer backswing with a wrist that's bent. And then you got this guy, John Rahm. He has a wrist that looks like that, but his swing is short. So once again, there is no wrong, there is no right. There's just a way that's going to work for the player. Pretty much. <laughs> so back to the same idea, it keeps coming up over and over and over again. Uh, there's no one perfect recipe. If there was, we'd, we'd move down to West Palm Beach and sell it for a million dollars and then play golf for the rest of the week. That'd so, be cool. Wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> now having said that, these players have found their way. So different wrist conditions, different arm swing lengths, different swing heights, different levels of rotation. Some have straight arms, some have bent arm. Some look like they're looking at the ball. Anika and Duval did not. Tons of different ways. Tons of different ways. And that's exactly how the app, the OptiShot Academy app is designed, is for you to prioritize and clarify what skills are you trying to develop and then give you options uh, so you can make choices that work for you. We found that everybody acts in their own best interest. So you will know what works for you. It will be very obvious to you. It's kind of like going to a wine tasting. You know what you like. You know what you don't like. Or music. Yeah, you know what thing. music you like and you know what music you don't like. So there's nobody in the world that can tell you uh, what the best music in the world is. It just doesn't make sense. Yes, sir. Take some advice from Happy Gilmore. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, I love that guy. Just get the ball in the hole. So however you decide to get the ball in the hole, there's going to be a way that works best for you. So don't try to be perfect. Don't try to get it right. Don't worry about being wrong. Just pick the methods that work the best for you that allow that golf ball to get in the hole the fastest. That's right. So we talk to our, our kids and we say, what's the object of the game of golf? And uh, our kids, because we, we want to have fun with them, they'll say, it's to have fun. You're like, you're right. But the object of the game of golf is to get the ball into the hole in as few strokes as possible. And since there's so many of us and so many different courses and holes and conditions and equipment and all this stuff, uh, you're ultimately trying to figure out what works best for you. So we got to dispel some myths. There's no one way to do it. There's a whole bunch of ways to do it. And then with our app, we have the skills that are needed requisite, like low point. Yeah, center face contact. Center face contact. Got to reasonably control the direction of the ball, right? Controlling yeah. the speed with the putter. So there are some non-negotiable skills that need to be, be developed. And then there's a ton of different ways to execute that. Yeah, so how you get there is going to be up to you. And a couple things that we want to remind you of as you're playing around with some of these experiments that maybe the best players in the world have run, just make sure that you're doing one at a time. So if you're trying to combine all these experiments at one time, whew, could get ugly quick. So just a friendly reminder, one experiment at a time. Very good. So at home, have fun with this. We hope this video helps you get some background into why we have the philosophy or approach that we do. Uh, so remember, it is skills, not just swings. So skills pay the bills. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. So thank you for watching. Ben, thanks for putting the slideshow together. Nice sweater, man. Yeah, you look good, man. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next time. Thank you.